everybody welcome back to free america i recently had to uh replace the battery in my casio g-shock mudman um which got me to uh thinking about a few things now i have been wearing uh casio g-shock watches for years and years so the this mudman watch is absolutely my favorite um this is the the standard, you know, uh, forty-five dollar Casio. Uh, what do they call it? Fifty-six hundred series watch. You can get these just about everywhere. Um, and I have probably had one of these watches since they first came out. Um, in fact, let me show you this. This watch. Um, was given to me originally by my best friend um, probably in 1991 and <laughs> since then I have uh, replaced the strap on it I have uh, worn it to a rack and uh, <clears throat> it, it doesn't work anymore um, Casio probably doesn't want you to see that but uh, the, the fact of the matter is I'm sure I could replace the battery on this watch and replace the face on it and it would continue to run. Um, this one probably, you know, belongs in a trash can. I just haven't put it there because of the um, sentimental value that it has for me, including these little pieces. These are about all the pieces I could find in the sand. So, good piece of gear. Um, but I was thinking, as I was replacing the battery, on these watches, or on this, uh, oops, on this mud man. You know, uh, the fact of the matter is, these are tough little watches, but they're not EMP hardened, right? So, if for some reason you were to, you know, suffer uh, an EMP, electromagnetic pulse, um, these watches would probably look like this watch so so what's the solution um, and I, I actually do have a couple of solutions now for convenience sake I own these watches and I wear them all the time like I said this is this is my go-to watch I also have one of these in green um, this particular watch that I just changed the battery on uh, did two tours in Iraq with me so I I believe it's an outstanding piece of equipment. Really do. Um, and real quick, let me let me touch on this. You can see that. This is the Sunto. Uh, I think it's called a Clipper. Um, they run about twenty bucks. It really is um, worth every penny if you want a a nice quality uh, compass that you can actually wear on your wrist it, it's a useful piece of equipment I don't have to tell you that if you're watching this channel so what do you do if you want a watch that's not going to be subject to EMP well you have to have a mechanical watch so let me show you a couple of watches here now these are both Russian watches this one is uh, I don't know if you can see it or not Anyway, right down here in Russian, it says, made in the Soviet Union. Um, this watch is from about 1988, 89, something like that. Um, and it's called Red Star Rising. Uh, so why do I give a shit? Not, I really don't like, um, you know, I sure as hell don't like the Soviet Union. I'm not really crazy about Russia. Um, but this is a relatively... durable piece of equipment um, relatively right to Soviet standards it's it's the you know what can I say it's the AK-47 of mechanical watches so this one is a self winder right I don't know if you can hear that that's the that's the self winding pendulum in there uh, winding up this watch so this is a newer version and as you can see, it has a KGB emblem on it, which is a bunch of crap. But uh, again, it's a self-winder. So 
This one is made by Amphibious Automatic Winding. And I don't know if I can see any other markings on this one. Uh, made in the USSR by Vostok Watch Company. And it is waterproof or water resistant. Okay, so you can still get these watches. In fact, Vostok and Amphibia are still making watches. Um, you can get these watches on eBay uh, for well under a hundred dollars. Um, and the great thing about them, of course, is that they're EMP proof because they're totally mechanical, right? So it's just a thought, a mechanical watch uh, that's not going to be affected by, you know, a, a solar burst or, a, you know, an elect or a nuclear weapon or something like that. Pretty, pretty good um, option. And here's another really great option for you. Now, I know some folks are going to go, holy crap, didn't you just say you can't afford a $200 knife? Yeah, I did. So, this is the Rolex Submariner, and I'm, I'm going to be blunt with you. I paid $50 for this knife, or for this, for this watch. So, I bought it overseas. Chances are, it's probably not actually a Rolex. But, it keeps perfect time. Um, it does everything I want it to do, including being a self-winder. It's got a, it is a heavy stainless steel band, and not only is it, you know, attractive, which I obviously don't care about whether or not my watch is attractive, um, but like I said, it's completely hardened as far as EMP. There's no electronics in this watch at all, right? It is a self-winding mechanism inside this watch as with these Russian watches completely mechanical so there's no electronics uh, in these watches at all so it's worthy of consideration when you start thinking about other things as well right um, what about the holographic sight or the red dot sight you have on your uh, on your M4 or you know whatever rifle you have um, and in fact, I have a red dot sight on my 12-gauge uh, shotgun that I that I hunt with. Um, you know, your uh, your automobile obviously um, is probably not EMP hardened. Um, so, lots of things to think about. But um, this time around, I was thinking about watches, so I thought I would uh, I would share that with you guys. So please like and subscribe. Um, share this with somebody that you think might be interested in it, and. Um, you know, I, I appreciate you uh, spending time with me today. So, God bless America. Mm -hmm.